Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to see a replacement of the deprecated function on back pressed in API 33. Let's start. So here I'm having a simple Android project. If you go here to do like on back pressed, like following, you won't see something get deprecated. But if you change your API here to 33, for example, well, target SDK, same thing, 33, you will see that this function is getting deprecated. So this is deprecated. If you go here, you will see the deprecation of the notice. As you can see, it is deprecated. And under the hood, we are using something called on back press dispatcher. This is the thing we are going to use in order to replace the previous one on back to press. So first of all, why we need to do that? What is the main reason for doing that? It was working perfectly, right? Why we need this update? Now here, if you go to your phone, there is a new way to do navigation in your application and your phone. If you go here, for example, to gesture, let me search for it, and navigation, this one, there is this previous way of using three buttons, like use this one to recent app, use this one to go to the launcher, and this one to go back. This is the back thing. But a lot of users, including me, are using this new gesture way. Stop using these three buttons so we can do the back. For example, going here, like for the recent app, you can kill it. You can go to the application, go to the back, like the following from here, you can go back. So this gesture is the new problem. Why? Because sometimes the user wants to go back, but sometimes there is a gesture like the following in the app in order to do something specific in the app. I don't know, current example, maybe this related to games or something. So this is a problem because we don't know if the user wants to perform something in the app, like a gesture, or he wants to go back. So we need to differentiate that. In order to differentiate that, we will tell the application if it wants to handle the back, all right. If it doesn't, we will give it a system to handle the back. Thing. So this won't work. So in order to implement that, well, this is pretty simple. If you go here to this documentation, I will put the link here in the description. So they are talking about this issue and how to implement it. I will show you how to, well, you can do that from the fragment for the activity. But the main thing is that you require the activity in order to add a call. This callback will be customizable for your need. So the first thing you want to get is something called on back press dispatch. This one. Using this thing, you will have to add a callback. Well, simply add callback, just give it your uh, lifecycle listener like that, and you give it a callback. This callback is an implementation of an abstract class. So you simply do something like following on back press callback. We will give it a value. We'll see that in a minute. First of all, you will give it here if it is enabled by default or not. So it will be enabled by default, and you will have to implement only one method, which is handle on back press. So here you will implement what your application have to do when the back is pressed. I will simply print some logs here. Now, if I run the application, here's the first thing. Previously, I was able to do that in order to go back. Now, if I do that, nothing will happen. It will stay here. Why? Because simply I'm just printing. If I go here, as you can see, there is three steps here. I can go back another time and you will see it is pressed. So this is how you can handle the new on back dispatcher thing. Why do we need this true or false? Because sometimes you want to activate your, or you want to enable or disable this callback. So what you can do, well, of course, you have to push it from here, at following, add like another var here or var. Let's call it a callback, something like that. By default, I'm giving it true. I can give it false, for example, here. And I'm going to use this callback. If I launch it right now, this callback won't be activated. So if I go to the app and do this back, I'm going to the back stack or the lasher or something else. But here is the catch. You can use this callback in order to activate it under some circumstances, like you will have to set it to true, for example, here. Now this will work and it will change it to working. Like if I go back right now, nothing will happen because it is activated or enabled. So that's the main thing about this dispatch. Now, if you go back to the documentation here, they are telling you, well, you have to use it like following it. Try, they are recommending using that, of course. And they are saying this two main thing, all callback registered with add callback thing are evaluated when you call this one. And for the second point, regardless you register instance of this on back press, on back press will always be called. The other thing they are talking about here in documentation, which is something we didn't talk about, which is the predictive back gesture. So this will allow you in Android 13, API level 33, to do a preview of what the action will be when you do that gesture. You have to add callback to something called on back involved callback which is this one. this one you have to add here to register callback and then register callback. This is something we didn't talk about. If you want me to talk about it, let me know in the video below. I will be happy to share something like that. Always follow the documentation. Documentation is such a nice place to learn all the required thing about the feature and also to see some code samples and everything. 
So yeah, you'll have also to include this one in your Android menus. And you have also to enable that in your device or developer options. So this is it for this video. I hope you understand how you can implement this on back dispatcher thing. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.